Hey, 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 welcome back to my channel. It is Christian here, and you're tuned in for more of my two cents. Now, y'all may be like, hold up, wait a minute, she shouldn't put she didn't put some white up in it. And did, okay? Now I know that I have a uniform for my videos where I only wear black shirts, but today we went to see a movie, and so when I got home, I was like, hmm, I still got some energy from hearing those dinosaurs cutting up on the screen. So let me just jump into the videos of it all. And so that's why I'm here today with a white shirt on, because I wore it outside, okay? All right. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, thank you for tuning in, for watching the suggested videos. You know, it's just something to be said about you watching one thing, it's suggesting another, and you actually enjoying it. So if you're here because of that, shout out to you and YouTube for the suggestion. And if you're new here because you've heard about our channel or you stumbled across it by using some keywords or terms, welcome. We appreciate you. And if you are a returning viewer, all right, because I've seen the analytics and they are high, okay? For return of viewership, thank you so much for doing that, for coming back and for being a part of my truth here, my two cents. It's my perception and it's my reality. And I do not expect everybody to agree or feel the same as me, but I appreciate and I love great dialogue. So I try to keep it light and free hearted, you know, as much as I possibly can, because there's enough in the world to take seriously. And this ain't one of those channels. So I'm not saying don't take this seriously, but it's just more food for thought, thought provoking topics and conversations that are usually taboo in black homes, African American culture and the African American church for sure. So if I can just do my little piece, you know, to bring people together and have people think for themselves. Critical thinking is so, you know, oh my goodness, it's so far removed now. Critical thinking and common sense is kind of like taking a back seat to existence. And I don't like that. It's upsetting me and my homegirls. So <laughs> if I can bring that to the table, that's what I'm going to do. All right. So today's topic before we jump into it, okay, because y'all seen the title already, so you know what it is. Number one, you are not crazy. Number two, you are not alone. And number three, God, your creator still loves you. All right, so let's talk about it. So this is going to be an interesting requested uh, video. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because I do have some others that kind of talk about how you can like leave a church after church hurt and move on. And then in my initial video that actually started and kicked off my entire channel last year, I did do a video called Why I Quit Church. And um, that definitely gives some insight into it. But this is going to be a little bit more in intimate and direct and talk a little bit more because someone did request in the comment section. I can't remember what video, but someone did ask for me to do a video and give my two cents on leaving the church, how to do it, how to do it peacefully and I'm assuming um, how to handle that you know as far as any backlash or anything like that and so I am like officially three to four years removed from church now my husband and I have lived in the North Dallas area for a little over five years July 1st will be six years I say a little over five years no we've been here for almost six years you guys and I am so 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 grateful for the move oh my god moving to Texas literally has been what has kept me from going back to church because I'm pretty sure we still lived in Mississippi where we moved from I probably would have backslid back into church and y'all probably like girl you crazy for saying that no that's what I mean because it would have been a backslidden state to go back to that because it was not great. It was not a good experience for me. And so as a lot of people have, have actually shared in the comment section of my first video and many after that, they actually have found more peace, less stress, less problems, less issues, um, less condemnation and all of that since they've left. And it's really true. And it's crazy because I'm not really one of those kind of people that say everybody can't be lying. Everybody can't be, you know, targeting you. Well, sometimes that's true. Everybody ain't lying about why they've left church. Everybody doesn't have church hurt. Some people just are tired. They're tired of, you know, the control. They're tired of the money demands. They're tired of the physical demands, the mental abuse, the, you know, chastising of adults, you know, it becomes a lot. It becomes a lot of um, traditional religious acts and cultish like engagement that you just say, I don't want to do this no more. Like I already got to go to work, right? I don't want to spend my weekend trying to fight other people's perceptions, right? I already have to keep it, get, keep it together so I can keep my paycheck. 
I don't want to have to keep it together so I can keep my salvation. I'm going to keep my salvation, but I'm going to quit church. And so that's kind of like what it got to for me and what it has come to for a lot of people. And so in these five points, because I'm only going to give y'all five points so I can hit y'all with a 15-minute video because I'm trying. God knows I'm trying to keep my videos down because I know that there's so much to take in on YouTube. And I want to be cognizant of everybody's time. I don't like to waste people's time. I don't feel like my videos are a waste of time, but I know that people like short, sweet, simple, and to the point because we got a lot that we take in on these social media streets every day. So let's jump into these, um, these points. How to leave the church. Now... If you have had any church hurt, if you've had any problems, please refer to my church hurt video and how to move on from there. But in this, I'm going to give you the step by steps that I took to leave me and my husband that we took to leave. There were some personal things that happened. There were a lot of things that actually led up to us leaving church and being done completely. But we left in a way that we don't have any, in my opinion, and I ain't heard none, but we don't have any kind of dirt on our names, right? We don't have any kind of broken relationships where if we saw any of the people that even did things to us in the past, we wouldn't be able to speak to them or they wouldn't speak to us or they want to fight or anything like that. We left on terms that were completely like stable, good, no riffraff or issues or drama or anything connected because we like to just have clean breaks and that's something a lot of people don't discuss you don't always have to stay somewhere that you were hurt you wouldn't do that if you were in a relationship that was hurting you you wouldn't do that in a you know domestic situation that's hurting you you wouldn't even do that on a, in a work environment if it was toxic it was too much you weren't able to focus or grow or thrive or you're being held back or targeted you would find a way to remove yourself from that environment and it's the same way with church we're not often told this or given that grace or this reality is not presented to us as an option because people don't like to lose memberships in the seats that is a problem when we're talking about salvation if my salvation is only based upon or predicated upon me actually being in attendance then there's something wrong with the actual uh, religion overall because attendance should never be what garners your level of um, spirituality or your actual validation as a believer. You should be able to take in and grow from all aspects of life that actually builds upon your salvation or whatever your belief system is. And there are people who never step foot in a church and they're way more like um, integral and uh balanced than some of those who are a lot of people in church are double-minded so when you think about leaving church you feel so much pressure because you're afraid your whole life you've been indoctrinated and you don't know how to make those steps to remove yourself and you feel guilty and you have to start asking yourself because i did after after we left um we left and we actually did communicate with our pastor while we were leaving and he was not oblivious to this. He actually never responded to the email or the, you know, the, the, um, the contact that we made that way. And we had opted to not do a meeting with our pastor and his wife before we left. We opted not to because we had met with them prior to leaving and they handled it totally wrong. They did not have good conflict resolution skills. They did not actually have the authority, the power, or even... They didn't even have the bandwidth maturity-wise. Like, that's what was so sad. They didn't even have the bandwidth maturity-wise to handle the breakdown in communication, relationship, and some of the life-on-life -life personal issues that were happening between us and another couple that... Another video. Go watch a story time, right? Uh, they, they didn't have what they needed to actually get us through that process successfully and safely. Like, it's crazy, but they didn't even have that. And so as a leader, you're talking about someone that you trust with your spiritual life, right? You trust with your soul and something comes up interpersonal wise between two members, which is going to happen because we're humans and we're imperfect in church. Nobody's perfect anywhere, but you're the leader and you don't even know how to handle it. You're telling me to come to church with the bat and watch it from your, your computer screen, watch the, the streaming from the, your computer screen because you don't want to lose members. And so at that point it became a, identify the root cause that's point number one identify the root cause what would make me leave why are you leaving do you really have a reason okay do you really have a reason that once you detach yourself you're not just going to go get back in it somewhere else with another group of people 
because the root cause has to be um, found and it has to be acknowledged internally. You don't need to have a group of people to meet with you to talk to you about why you don't want to be somewhere. You know why you don't want to be there. You know why you shouldn't be there. So it comes to me, if it no longer serves you, why stay? If you go to a restaurant today and everybody's walking, all the servers are walking past you, not acknowledging you, not taking your drink order, not ordering your food, not bringing you your food. You ask for something, they don't bring it back. They're not serving you. You're going to feel slighted. You're going to ask why, and then you're going to leave, right? You're not going to come back. And so if you don't get to the root cause of leaving and why you want to leave and what it is that has prompted that to be the, the response and the desire, you're going to find yourself in that situation again at another church. Because you may leave one church and go somewhere else, but if you're like me and mine, we left church, period. Like we don't want to go to nobody's organized uh, religion or nobody's building. We just don't have that desire because it doesn't serve us. We've realized what our strengths and our powers are. We've realized what our weaknesses are and what we need to work on daily as all of us do. And that's something that sometimes a man, a pastor, just cannot help you to do. And I saw a post earlier this week that said, yes, you need a pastor. No, you don't. You don't. Okay. And a lot of people ain't gonna like that if they watch this video and I just don't care because I also don't need a boss and I'm an entrepreneur right? I also don't need um, a tax preparer if I can learn myself. The same tax codes anybody else can learn, you can learn, right? There's all, it's all about intent, desire, and um, it's all about intent, desire, and yeah, those two, really, that's what it's about, and your ability to comprehend what you're learning and why you want to learn it. So identify the root cause for you leaving church. Number two, address, don't suppress. When you're ready to leave, address it as much as you can. I mentioned earlier in the video that my husband and I sent an email that my pastor did not respond to. We did not meet with him because he did not know how to focus on the issues at hand when we did. He would be all over the place, y'all, talking about stuff that didn't even have anything to do with, with what the, the topic was, what we were bringing to the table. We had more um, structure. And we wanted to reach more resolve than he did. We would leave meetings not even knowing what, what we had, like, figured out. Nothing was fixed. Nothing was even proposed for a good solution. And so we got tired and we were like, we're not meeting with him. I mean, like, we're grown. We talked to him several times in the last couple of weeks. They've actually been dodging us and not calling us back and not scheduling meetings after we've asked them to. They've gone out of town. Totally your business. Do what you want. But... You keep pushing us off, so you're getting this good long email and do what you want to do with it. Frame it, print it out, hand it out in service on Sunday so people can see how bad of a pe of people we were. But we did our part to communicate, so we didn't suppress it, we addressed it. And make sure people know what it is they've done. If you want to go this route, if you feel like that'll be a safe form of expression for you, so you're not holding on to pain or, or trauma, um, address it. That's what I suggest you do. Uh, the next thing, build yourself back up. So this was a, a process for me. I don't know for my husband, men usually do a better job of masking things or handling things internally and moving on. Uh, for me, it was a lot of work to build myself back up because I felt bad. I felt bad, y'all not going to church. I felt bad on Sundays when I was just sitting around, lying around at the mall or whatever because I felt like well dang if I'm not at church I shouldn't be at the grocery store right now right or I'll go out after three when everybody else should be out of church it took so much of my personality away it took so much of my identity away that I felt guilty for actually having a life I felt guilty for actually wanting to do something different um from going to church and so build yourself back up that means be around people who don't live breathe sleep eat drink think church all day long and use churchy scriptures and churchy references and churchy this and spiritual that find you find your identity again like think about think on the things that make you who you are and when you do that and you find that that confidence and that joy and that peace in being you oh my goodness I feel like that's when you actually connect with your creator most because you're not waiting for somebody else to give you direction, you're actually showing up for the directions from your creator. And instead of you having a liaison, a spiritual liaison to tell you what to do next, you're able to go and, and, and seek for yourself and not get information third party or even receiving tainted 
information from someone who just wants to manipulate you to get what they want from you. So it's always thus said the Lord that God showed me this or told me that about you. What did he say to me? Because sometimes you can just cut some stuff head on, right? I didn't get that download, period, okay? Not talking about it with you because that's not what the Lord told me to do. And you can move for yourself. So build yourself back up. A lot of people in church don't want you to depend on self. Because if you do that, that is independence. That keeps you from depending on them. So build yourself back up. Key point, once you do disconnect from church and stop going, that is something you're going to have to do getting back to you. You have to get back to yourself. Because I'm pretty sure a lot of us have lost our identities with serving, being in church, making it a routine, having it on our schedule, feeling convicted when we miss or we're not around people of like precious faith or gathered with the brethren or all of that other stuff. You feel like you're left out or like you've done something wrong. And child, it is just as much peace in resting on Sunday as it is in getting dressed to impress somebody that don't want to see you or angry anyway. So focus on you. That's what you should do. And then our next part, uh, my next point Choose peace over punishment. I had to start figuring out that everything that I was doing was not wrong. Everything that I wanted was not sinful. Everything that I wanted, God didn't want me to not have. And I was no longer trying to fight for freedom. I just had to accept that it was already mine. I didn't have to pray and seek God for every little thing. My husband has this saying that it's oh so true. You don't have to pray about doing the right thing. You just don't. Morally, you know what's right and wrong. You know what's lawful and, and unlawful. You know these things. You have a moral compass. Now, whether or not you choose to execute according to the knowledge that you have based on those things, that's up to you. But there are some things that you just need to understand that it's not wrong for you to do. It's just not missing a tithe. If that was once your belief, if you believe that if when you don't tithe, you, you, you lack that's going to be what you actually experience. But if you believe that you can tie it in a different way every day to people you don't know along your way, then you'll be fulfilled with joy and peace. That's going to be what you experience. And I had to start realizing my peace meant more than the punishment that I've been promised from church. Like if I, if I chose God, I was choosing him for all of these benefits and now I've chose him and now I'm in bondage. It didn't add up, didn't make sense. So I chose peace. And when I love church, I found it. And the last point here, God loves you enough and God's love is enough to sustain you wherever you go, wherever you go. There are people that I know who have been in church since they were 16, 15, 14, or grew up in church like I did. And once they get a little, a little taste of freedom, they get out of it. They start, they, they start realizing, I still know what I knew when I was there, right? I still have the same convictions and the same feelings and the same discernment that I did when I was in it weekly, right? Daily, every other day, whatever. And you realize that the words that people say, oh, church is beyond the four walls. Y'all say that, but you don't practice it. But once you detach yourself from it, you really start realizing, oh, this is about that action. Like I can really be a believer and not ever go back. There's peace in this if I choose not to. I don't have to endorse a ministry, right? Living for an audience of one, you. Because if the, if the creator made you in his likeness and image, then the image that you should have should be per portrayed wherever you are. If God's love is not enough to sustain you when you miss a Sunday or you just never go back, Baby, was that ever a good plan for you anyway to pick? I don't think so. I wouldn't pick a creator that's so weak that if I didn't go to a building to serve him, her, or them, that I wouldn't make it. That's not, that's not a strong creator. That's not a strong individual that has influence and impact on my life beyond me attending a service. So keep things, think these things in mind. If you feel guilty, if you feel shame, if you feel bad, you have to go back to number three. Build yourself back up because why do you feel guilty, shame, or, uh, or, or why do you feel bad about not going? Because of what you've been taught. But think about if you've never been introduced to religion that way and it was always made to be free and flowing for you. You would feel good. You would be okay with if you went to the park instead of church because you might run into someone that needs your light. That might be a life-on-life -life relationship or growth that you could actually lead right to the source. Through you. 
So sometimes we feel as if though not going is a bad thing, but for some of us, if you're already thinking about not going, that's your sign right there that it's time up, right? That you should remove yourself from the environment. And I'm not an advocate for the great falling away of church. I don't care what people choose to do. All I'm saying is do what's best for you. Not anything that will harm other people. I don't want to give this disclaimer because I've had people comment it before. Well, you don't want to tell people to do what makes them feel good because some people want to do unlawful things. I'm not talking about in that manner. Anything that I tell you to do that pleases you is lawful, right? I'm not talking about doing crazy things to hurt or harm other people or being reckless, ratchet, and dramatic. I'm saying do the right things that you feel that frees you. Not that it impends danger upon others, right? Or um, is against the law, but don't spend your life of religion or belief in bondage. And sometimes bondage is connected to saying yes to church. And so this is how I separated myself. This is how I'm almost five years into the journey. Um, I don't, you know, I don't try to recruit other people to not be a believer or not go, but I, I will definitely say this. People can see the change in me with me not going. They can definitely see that. They can see the difference in my personality, in my life, in the things that have occurred because I'm no longer waiting for someone to drop a, a rope for me to hold on to, right? I've just went and got my own rope and threw it up there, anchored it, and now I'm just climbing, Right. And I'm passing all of these other people that are of these religious mindsets and, you know, always crying and fasting and praying and doing all this other stuff. And they're still not seeing results because they're not taking action and actually taking accountability. And here I am on the other side, grew up in the same kind of environment that they did with the same understanding and beliefs. But I switched and I removed things that didn't serve me. You're not going to keep passing my table up with trays and food and think I'm just going to sit here and salivate and wait for you. That's conditioning that I do not sign up for. So choose something different. Choose something better. Your family and friends may not understand, but it's not for them to get. Because when they start seeing you live the life that's truly meant for you, they're going to ask you, how are you doing it? They're going to want to know. And if they don't ask and they are judging because you don't still go, then just understand they're too close minded and it's not meant for them just yet to get the freedom of it all because some people are going to be in bondage until the end of time and that's not your problem <laughs> but when you get that unction and you feel that discernment and that desire in your heart to remove yourself from church settings i can all i can say is explore it don't ignore it all right there you go <laughs> i've enjoyed sharing my little two cents on the leaving church of it all and how to do that and how you kind of can restore yourself in the process when you're removing yourself and still having your belief system no longer going to church does not mean that you do not believe in god or that you are not a spiritual person it just means that the organized religion part of it the tradition the rituals if you will the environment of being around other people you don't want that anymore and it's okay it's a lot of people that work out in their garage because they left the gym that don't make them not want to lose weight it just means they don't want to do it there so there we have it if you enjoyed this video make sure you hit the like button subscribe to the channel i would love to add you to our two cents crew bars and then if you don't we'll see you in the next video and you can drop down in the comments below and let me know how you think the best things to do or if you need more information on how to leave church child i can I can give you a little breaky breakdown, but for me, it was here today, gone tomorrow. I did not play those games. When I saw the signs, I got out of line. All right. <laughs> See you guys in the next video. Bye.